fourth graders. Welcome to another grammar lesson. We're working on adjective types, and this time we're going to work on the indefinite adjective. So, simple definition, an adjective modifies or describes a noun or pronoun, and an indefinite adjective is a special adjective that describes a noun in a way that is not very specific. And that's why we use the word indefinite. If something is defined, it's very clear. If something is not defined or indefinite, it is not very clear. So adjectives like these include words like few, we don't know exactly how many, some, who knows, many, that could be five, that could be 500, less, several, and each. But you have to be careful because infinite indefinite pronouns also exist and they use the same words oftentimes. So let's look at the symbol for the indefinite adjective and that is this. And I chose the white triangle on the inside just to represent, hey, we don't know what's going on in there. It's indefinite. Who knows? But that's the one I chose when I created the adjective work extension for my Montessori training. And now let's look at an example. So the example is many try, but few people can actually climb that mountain. So when I go through here, I see the word many, and that could be an indefinite adjective, but it's not modifying or describing anything. So that means it's a pronoun and it's taking the place of a noun. Here we have the verb try. Here we have the conjunction but. Few here is in fact an indefinite adjective modifying people. We have the auxiliary or helping verb can. We have the intensifier adverb here and then climb is our main verb. And look what I did here. I added a demonstrative adjective because we learned that already. And of course we have another noun here, mountain. So this is an example of how you use and identify indefinite adjectives. So let's go down and we're gonna do the fun stuff and practice together. So here goes. So I'm gonna do the same thing I did with the demonstrative adjectives. I'm gonna write underneath and then I'm going to identify them with the letters IA. So here we go. Some kids are not listening to the teacher. Hmm. All right. So let's start with what we know. And let's go to our symbols here. Always start with what you know. So let's find our nouns. Okay. Oh boy, that's big. Too small. Okay. Now we have that, we can copy that, paste it, have another one there. So we have two nouns, kids and teacher. Let's look at another one that we know. This is one of our favorites, the article, right? The, a, and, or the, okay. And we have are and listening. Now this is a great moment for me to teach you guys a little something. When you use the adverb of negation here, not, it oftentimes shows up when you have a progressive tense here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put my verb symbol over listening, the main part of the progressive verb there, but I am not going to put an auxiliary verb over are because I am understanding that the verb is are listening. Okay, now not, of course, is an adverb completely reverses the action of the verb. Okay. And I don't, I'm not going to worry about R for now. And now I'm left with some and two. Well, two can be a part of an infinitive, but in this case it's taking an object and it's got that familiar look and it's not with other action words. So if this is a preposition. Okay, and then we are left with some, and you guessed it, kids. This is our indefinite adjective. Whoa, hello, hello, oh, oh boy. That is a pretty intense indefinite adjective. <laughs> okay, there we have it. Some kids are not listening to the teacher. And we've got our indefinite adjective there. And we're going to put IA, some, 
definite adjective because we don't know exactly how many kids are not listening to the teacher. So there we have it. And let's go to the next one. This medicine is effective for most children. All right, again, my strategy is always go with what I know first. And I know nouns. And I know that medicine is a person, place, or thing. Looks like I need a little extra space here. Okay. And I know that children is a person, place, or thing. It's not a specific child, so it's not a proper noun. But it's definitely a noun. And this, I'm familiar with this. And it's taking an object, which means, that's right, kids, we have a demonstrative adjective here. Let's see here. Ah, I did it again. Double check our size. That looks about right. Maybe a little bit smaller, but that's okay. Is effective. Hmm. Is, I think we discussed this when we talk about attributive and predicate adjectives. Is is going to be our linking verb. And the verb to be is very much an equal sign. Medicine is what? Effective. Okay. And effective in this case is going to be a predicate adjective, but it's just a normal descriptive adjective, so we're just going to roll with the descriptive adjective right there. And then we have for, and this is a word of relationship. Actually, I'm just going to copy this one. There we have it, for. So this medicine is effective for. And most children, we don't know exactly how many that is, so that is, in fact, an indefinite adjective. So there you have that one. And we're going to go down here. And this is a demonstrative adjective. And... I'm going to get extra credit. That is a predicate adjective. And most as an indefinite adjective. There we have a little extra credit there for me. This medicine is equal sign what? What is it? Effective for most children. We're not exactly how many children but most children, so that's the majority of children. All right, so let's move on to the next one. Nobody in this family wants to eat any spaghetti. <laughs> if you've been eating spaghetti for weeks, that might be the case. So let's go ahead and look at what we know first. I always start with what we know, and I know that spaghetti is a noun. Person, place, or thing, it's a food. And I know that family is a noun. Now family, uh, we could say, is an abstract noun because family is certainly something, but it's, it's not necessarily something you can see, feel, hear, taste all the time. So we could potentially say that family is an abstract noun, or we could go with a common noun. Uh, I'll choose abstract noun for now. You can argue with me later. Um, I love the fact that grammar is like this. Okay, when you say like all in the family or you know, family ties or family matters. It's some kind of family, but not necessarily your family, but it does connote an idea. So I'm going to make an argument there. So nobody in this family. And what's my verb? Wants. Definitely. So let's go to the verb. Oh, I keep forgetting. I should just copy these. All right, nobody, our family wants spaghetti. So I've got to eat, to and eat. Is to a preposition here? Well, let's look. It says to eat, but it's kind of like an action after it instead of an object, which tells us that this is a verbal, this is infinitive. I love doing this because I get to teach you in these examples how infinitives and other verbals work, even though it's not formally that lesson for you. So I think that's great. And any, well, any is going to be, that's right, you guessed it, 
an indefinite adjective. Okay, and this, oh, wait a second, that reminds me, this, that, these, those, yep, demonstrative, adjective. And the word in is, hmm, in this family taking objects. This one takes sort of a verb thing after it, so that's an infinitive. But in this case, it's taking objects. It's a word of relationship, so this is going to be a preposition. Move my preposition down there. And finally, we have the word nobody. So is nobody going to be an indefinite adjective? Well, no, it's not, because nobody is not modifying or describing anything. So if you guessed pronoun, you would be correct. This is an indefinite pronoun. I really should, at some point, come up with symbols for the various kinds of pronouns, adverbs. It's something that's been on my radar for a while, but uh, it'll, it'll wait. We'll get to it someday. So nobody in this family wants to eat any spaghetti. So notice here is, here we have the, the indefinite pronoun. Here we have the indefinite adjective. So let's move on to the next one. Many people like to go hiking, but few like to get lost. That is so true. So let's take a look at this one. It's pretty tough. So I'm going to go ahead and start looking at it here. Like. I know what like is. Like. If I like something, that means there's an action somewhere there. So I'm going to go ahead and find my verb first. Now, and then I see this word to again, and it has an action behind it, to go. So I know that's going to be an infinitive. Okay. By the way, this is the simplest form of the infinitive. Be a little smaller. Don't overshadow the verb there, buddy. Okay. And hiking. Hmm. But isn't hiking an action? Yes, it is. But it's receiving the action of this infinitive, and it's got the ing and it is receiving the, uh, the action of the verb here. So like to go, to go what? Well, you like to go hiking. So this is actually a gerund, which is another thing, another verbal. This one, again, is an advanced one. Don't worry, kids. I'm not going to be putting verbals in your follow-up work, but I love using the opportunity to teach you the verbals here. So a gerund essentially is a verb acting like a noun. So it could be a, a subject of a sentence. Running is fun. Running would be the gerund. It could be the object of a preposition. It could be the direct object of a sentence. So we've just identified some pretty tough things here. Let's look at, oh, I missed people. Let's do people as our noun. Where's my noun symbols? There we are. Oh, again, I keep forgetting. I don't need to do that. OK. People like to go out, but, I know but, and, but, or, those are our main coordinating conjunctions. Okay, you remember that one. Conjunction, junction, what's your function? All right, ooh, I've got like again. We've got a compound uh, sentence here. Makes sense. Okay. Like there. Ooh, to get. There's another infinitive. And don't worry, kids. I know this is a tough example, but I think it's a, an interesting one. Like to get lost. Hmm, lost here. This is a tough one. Uh, like to get lost. And when, you, when you tell somebody to get lost, even though that's very rude, it might mean something. Here, I'm going to interpret this as an adjective because it's describing the few that they don't like to get lost. So it's receiving the action of the infinitive there, but it's not necessarily a noun. So let's go ahead and do an adjective here. This is the great thing about grammar, kids, is that at a certain point, you know, actually, I know I remember what happened when you do that. At a certain point, you just have to examine and analyze 
every sentence for what it is. So we could argue about that about this. I remember at my Montessori training, I would uh, my one of my trainers and I, she and I would would sometimes have arguments and debates about what grammar symbols go with what word in any given sentence and it was a very fruitful debate because you learn a lot about grammar and about the function of words and at that building block level where we are here it's very important to have those conversations so I have here few and many well few and many if I go back up here I have many try but few people can actually climb that mountain here few is modifying people and here many is not modifying anything what about down here? Here, many is taking an object. It's describing something here, and few is not. So if you're guessing that many, in this case, is your indefinite adjective, you are right. Many is, in fact, your indefinite adjective here. Oh, no. I lost my sentence. Okay. Okay, let me move my symbols here. Clean it up a little bit. And here, few is in fact going to be our indefinite pronoun. And that is why you cannot just look at a word and say, oh, I know what that is. You can't just say, oh, the word few is going to be this and many is going to be that. Pineapple, that's a noun, right? Well, not in the sentence, I ate pineapple pizza. In that sentence, it's a descriptive adjective. So this one was a little bit tougher. This was, many people like to go hiking. So this is an infinitive phrase, receiving the object here in the gerund. But, conjunction, few, indefinite pronoun, like, another infinitive here, to get lost. Okay, that one was pretty tough. That's probably the toughest example that we've got. But hopefully you learned a little something there. Let's go to our last example. Several beautiful birds flew by the window today. Again, keep it simple. Start basic. Window and birds. So I know those are nouns. And I also know from learning from Mr. Adam <laughs> that today is an adverb of time. One of my sixth graders has a great way of doing this. He draws a little clock hands on there. I really should make one of those symbols. I think that's a perfect way to describe an adverb of time. So I have the verb flew. Okay. Give myself a little room here. By and the, well, how could I forget the? The is always an article. There are very few things that you can say are always the case in grammar, but it's almost, I think, pretty much the case that the is an article. Now, of course, somebody's going to find out that it's not, but I'm, gonna, I'm just going to stake my claim here and say that the is always an article. <laughs> but rarely do you ever say always when it comes to English grammar. English grammar is tough. So many broken rules, so many different uh, beautiful stories about words that have entered the English language. I love learning about how languages develop over time, and English is fa a fascinating study. Fascinating. All right. So birds flew by the window today. Now we've got beautiful. If you think that beautiful is a descriptive adjective, a regular one, that's absolutely right. Okay, so I keep doing this, but it's kind of fun to have these gigantic adjectives taking over my thing here. And several, that is going to be our indefinite. Several birds, we don't know exactly how many. And I have several beautiful birds flew by the window today. Now, if I go back up, I notice I forgot to do the rest of my work. So I'm just like you kids. I forget too, but that's okay. So this is a demonstrative adjective. And any is my indefinite adjective for this one. Got to go back and finish my work. I'm not exempt from this process. 
many is my indefinite adjective and lost is just a descriptive adjective. I would say, I'm just going to write this out. We should come up with a way to differentiate descriptive adjectives from demonstrative. If you have any ideas, let me know. I'll leave it up to you guys to figure that out. Kids are generally better at that than I am. Okay, I'm going to be smart here and copy this. Absolutely beautiful. Descriptive adjective. Get rid of that there. Several. It's going to be my indefinite adjective. And I think that's it. Several beautiful, no adjectives out there. Many lost, those are my adjectives there. This, any adjectives there. This, effective, most, there. Some, there. So, what we've done here is we've just done some samples. These sentences are definitely harder than the ones that I'm giving you for your follow up, but it is a great way for me to introduce concepts and review things like prepositions different kinds of nouns, the verbals that we typically don't teach until a little bit later. But you know what? I always use whatever opportunity I have to teach, and I might as well. So this is going to be your follow-up. Adjective types and definite adjective. Do a few sentences below. Get it? <laughs> so if you print it out, use colored pencils, label them all. Uh, the option that I'm trying to use now is Google Docs where I have the digital image files for you to place over sentences. We're going to see how that works out. That's something I've been doing there. And here's my example. Each person gets to choose a treat. And again, I've got the infinitive here, but don't worry, I don't have any of those in your work. Each is my indefinite adjective, modifying person. Gets is my verb. To choose is an infinitive. A is my article and treat is another noun and I wrote out each as my indefinite adjective. So several chickens escaped the yard today. A few raccoons came to the fence. Most like most cats like cat food and extra treats. Many bears live in that forest. In a few minutes you will see me. That's probably not true. But those are the sentences that I came up with for your follow-up. So please do a few sentences below. <laughs> Hopefully you get that. I'm having way too much fun with this presentation. So to recap, this has been a presentation on the indefinite adjective. The follow-up activity will be po is posted in the assignment. This YouTube video is posted in Google Classroom under the assignment as well. And kids, have a great day. Grammar is so much fun. And I'll see you in, uh, well, I won't see you at school. I will see you at Zoom presentations. Have a great night.